keep on keeping on. Maybe you would hear her say, hold on just a little while longer. I know we are at somewhat of a school function, and there is this thing called separation of church and state. No, I won't stay too long, but I have to cross over into Philippians when he says, brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do know. Forgetting those things which are behind me, I care toward the mark of the pride of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. And then I landed on some words that stuck with me. Some words that hopefully season of 2016 will stick with you as well. These words so profound and poetically written by Christian Langston Hughes, titled Mother to Son. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal step. It's had taxi and scrimp and boards torn up. And places with no carpet on the floor. Bad. But all the time I was going to climb. And reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the door. Well, there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back now. Don't you sit down on the steps because you're going to find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now for I still going, honey. I still climb. And life for me ain't been no Christmas day. This is the poem. This is the poem where I hang my hat. For these are the words that resound the most to me by Langston Hughes, mother to son. And whether it's mother to son to you, or mother to daughter, or father to son, or father to daughter, this poem sticks because it has some type of parental motivation and inspiration to you. Our mama and daddy some of these kids around here think that they haven't been through half of the things that you've been through. Nothing could be further from the truth. But the amazing thing is that some of our parents and grandparents, when you look back, they have accomplished almost twice as much as we have with half of the education and the resources. And that's a wonder to some. Boys and girls, my parents, your parents, your grandparents that are sitting at this table with you right now. They didn't grow up with the internet. If we wanted a book from the library, we had to pull out this long drawer called the card catalog. We didn't have Google. We grew up with Encyclopedia Britannica. And at everybody's house who had an encyclopedia set, there was always one Little we didn't have cell phones, we had the old rotary phone with the bungee cords attached to the wall. We didn't have social media to keep up with our friends, but we wanted to keep up with our friends, we had bicycles. The only tablets that we had came from Big Chief, which was not a crime. Y'all got little boys. We have washboards. Y'all got Instagram? We had Kodak Instant Picture. You have to decide between U-verse and Comcast Xfinity. We have to decide between UHF and VHF. Y'all have satellites on the rooftop. I remember going on top of my grandmother's roof and turning that test.
but both were gainfully employed. Both retired in their respective careers. They raised six kids, countless grandchildren, and never received any governmental assistance. And I'm trying to figure out how, how on earth were they able to accomplish so much with so little? How was my grandmother able to feed her kids, her grandkids, and the old lady down the street? Funny thing is, the answer to that question is actually in the question. No, her kids didn't give her the resources to do so. The grandkids didn't give her the resources. In fact, it was the old lady down the street. And it wasn't that the old lady down the street even gave her the things she needed. But the old lady down the street was the recipient of something from my grandmother that I want to talk to you about tonight. She was the recipient of her service. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what propels the poor, the downtrodden, the despair, into the rich, fulfilling, the hopeful, and the prosperous. That one word that I want to briefly touch on, and that's called service. So here you are. I need to say no other message than what's already in the title of this event. Seniors, sir, there was no need for me to ever struggle with what to tell you, seniors. Simply, sir, every one of you in here has a destiny towards greatness. Whether you reach it or not, it's simply up to you. And we all have different ways of arriving at that greatness. And no matter what you think your lot in life is, remember these words of Dr. Martin Luther King when he said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make the subject and verb agree to serve. You only need an article of grace, a soul generated by love. Service is the fuel that propels you to higher heights. Service is the recipe that keeps the royalty humble. Service. Service is the concrete in the foundation that builds character. And I'm going to share this with you. Serve with your gifts and God will give you more. Serve for no gain and God will open doors. Serve when inconvenient, you're guaranteed to be blessed. When service is your guide, seniors, you're destined for success. And I want to speak on that for just one more second. Serve with your gifts, and God will give you more. Well, David, how can I, how can I serve with my gifts? All I do is work around the house. Well, that's easy. Work around somebody else's house. <laughs> Sister so and so can't do her laundry on the weekends because she can't pick up the basket. Boys and girls, you can serve some of your time by assisting the elderly with some of their domestic chores. Brother so and so can't leave the house because he's in a wheelchair. We as a community can come together and build a wheelchair ramp at that house. Well, how can I serve? The only thing I'm good at is sports. With no problem. I know a lot of young boys and girls in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program in need of a mentor who would love to toss the football or hit the volleyball with a big brother or sister. Serve with your gifts and God will give you more. Well, how can I serve? All I can do is really sing. Then we need to see you in the nursing homes every holiday, Christmas carol, to the elderly. Serve with your gifts and God can give you more. Serve for no gain, and God will open doors. I remember as a child when I used to follow my grandfather cutting the grass. And then when I got old enough to cut the grass by myself, he turned me loose with the lawnmower, and I would go cut the ladies' yard, the old ladies' yards next to ours, as my grandfather would always do. And I remember the first time when I cut her grass and I finished it, she came out with her little corn first. 
<laughs> and she opened it up and she began to unravel that money. Y'all know how it is. Hold it up. 47 times. And I stood there eager and anxious to see what she was about to hand me. And as she unfolded that money, and she handed me a $5 bill, my grandfather walked out the house right at that moment and said, what's that? And she said, well, I want to give him a little something. He said, oh, no, he don't need nothing. <laughs>
or whether you're going directly into some type of vocational trade school in the workplace. Whatever your life is, I encourage you to do two things. Come back home and give back to help the next young boy and girl do the same things that you have done. The journey won't be easy. But if you remain focused on the prize that's in front of you, don't care about two things in life. There's two things in life you don't need to care about. One of them is what he said, and the other one is what she said. If you remain focused on the prize that's in front of you, then come back home to give and serve. Learning will continue right here at the Lamar High School. Legacies will continue right here at the Lamar High School. The championship attitude will continue right here at the Lamar High School. But nothing stops when you leave, including your journey. Boys and girls, when you walk across that stage in four more months, when you get that diploma, I want you to hold your head up high, roll your shoulders back, stick your chest out, because you are doing something that so many people said that you couldn't do. So many people said you weren't able to do. But then again, I want you to realize that even at that moment, at that celebratory time, that that is just the beginning of your journey. Keep on keeping on. Don't stop now. Don't sit down on those stairs. Keep on climbing. Because life for me ain't been no pistol step. Thank you.